What is going on with Tucker slash Vladimir Putin? Why is a conservative American interviewing Putin as if he is misunderstood? I'm Australian so I have no idea what is happening. What I do know is Tucker Carlson is a politician slash journalist, and he is interviewing Putin regarding the war on Ukraine. I thought the US made it clear that it was supporting Ukraine so why is Tucker, a conservative, trying to suggest Putin is misunderstood? I saw that Twitter video he uploaded and I'm thoroughly confused. I understand objective reporting and trying to get both sides of the issue. But my understanding is Tucker is quite biased journalist? I'm confused. What the hell is happening? Answer: Tucker is a far-right American polemicist. He's had a number of different shows on US television and has, at various points, identified as a libertarian, a conservative, a republican, and a number of other labels, but his politics have always been extremely right-wing. Vladimir Putin is, well, Putin. You know who he is. Over the last decade or so, there has been an increasing fascination with Putin in right-wing circles. He controls Russian media, cracking down on journalistic freedoms and criticism. The right-wing loves that because they believe all media is left-wing, except for a few sources that are explicitly right-wing. He has elevated the Russian Orthodox Church to essentially an arm of the state. The US right believes that the US should be explicitly Christian. He has passed anti-LGBT plus laws in Russia, the right hates LGBT plus equality, particularly as applied to trans people. He's militaristic, the right fetishizes the military. He's autocratic, the right loves a strongman. He's rich, the right thinks money and power make virtue, unless you disagree with their politics, in which case it makes you a corrupt scumbag. Russia is very ethnically white, the right sees minority populations as a threat. Putin used the powers of the Russian state to support Trump's presidential campaign in 2016 and 2020, Trump is the de facto leader and voice of the Republican Party. The American right has, for nearly a decade now, begun admiring Putin more and more because he's fighting against, small l, liberalism and, wokeness, which is used as a perjurative more than it refers to any sort of coherent philosophy. More recently, Putin invaded Ukraine. This put a lot of strain on the right's fascination with Putin because whatever else they believe in, they also tend to identify with Western Europe as their societal forebears. Now, Tucker has gone to Moscow and given Putin an extremely solicitous interview, the first interview with a Western media figure Putin has had since the war started. This follows other quite deferential interviews Tucker has had with Hungarian dictator Viktor Orban and Belarusian dictator Alexander Lukashenko. Putin clearly viewed Tucker as a safe outlet for Russian messaging towards the West. Tucker, for his part, didn't disappoint. He allowed Putin to say pretty much anything he wanted with little to no pushback. That is notable in part because Tucker is frequently extremely argumentative with his guests when he doesn't agree with them. While the US overwhelmingly supports Ukraine, the US Republican Party has made that support quite contentious. The US has a major election coming up and they see it as advantageous to their interests to block everything that Democrats want to do. They've blocked key US support for the Ukrainian war effort and generally are attempting to prevent Congress and President Biden from doing anything at all, while Republican governors are outright defying US law in hopes of making Biden look weak. Tucker giving this extraordinarily deferential interview to the Russian president can be seen as part of that strategy. It can also be seen as intentionally undermining US influence in Eastern Europe as well as a more than tacit endorsement of Putin and his government. All in all, going to Russia to promote the Russian autocrats message is controversial because it flies in the face of the sort of hyper-patriotic messaging that the Republican Party has campaigned on for the last several decades. It's a significant break from the America First platform and an endorsement of repressive authoritarianism. Of course, Tucker won't say that. He'll tell you he merely means to get to the bottom of the issues and hear what Putin has to say, but his explanation is belied by the fact that he declined to press back on anything of substance that Putin said. Tucker has been flirting with supporting Russian autocracy for a while now, but it seems at this point he is fully embracing it.